Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Post Cologne. Today we're gonna to be unboxing five new Middle Eastern fragrances that I just got in, including Latafa Pride Wajud. So let's jump into it. All right, it is time for some unboxing and first impressions of five new fragrances that I recently got in. It's part of a larger Boxing Day haul that I got. Your boy Post went a little bit nuts on Boxing Day. I got like 12, 13 new fragrances came in. So this is part two of this fragrance haul and they are from two different suppliers. I got some from Fragrance Buy and I got some from Perfumes Online. So I'm gonna have links down in the description to all of these fragrances if you decide you wanna check any of them out. Also I have coupon codes for both sites to save yourself $5 off your first purchase if you decide you want to shop with them. So we got, what is it, three Latafas and we got two Rosasis we're gonna go over in this video. So let's quit screwing around, let's get into it. All right, so kicking things off, we're gonna start with the House of Latafa and it's gonna be Ragba for Man. Now I picked this sucker up from Fragrance Buy for $22. This has been on my radar for a little while. I have the, uh, the original Ragba and I have the Ragba Wood Intense. Both excellent fragrances. Wooden Tense is like one of my favorite fragrances, to be quite honest. So, Ragba for men, decides worth go. Good deal on it. So, let's just quit screwing around. Let's just jump into this, see what we got going here. All right, so there we go. There is the box for Latafa's Ragba for Man. Pretty straightforward. It does have this kind of slide book jacket kind of deal going on here and on this cover. Nice little metallic gold, all the necessaries on the back there, but overall nothing too special with that. The box itself, again, just kind of a cardboard, kind of a wood grain texture on that. If the camera can pick that up without too much shine. And again, necessaries all on the back, but nothing too special with the box here. Let's see what the bottle looks like. Oh, we got, we got a deodorizer in there as well for pure, Pure Audi, Pure Audi. So that's thrown in there too. I think I already have one of these to be quite honest, who cares? All right, so here we have the bottle for Latafa's Ragba for men. Nice heavy bottle to it. It does have an interesting kind of shape to it. It does have some kind of like sheared off edges, giving it a, you know, a little bit more of a personality than your typical kind of, you know, rectangular style of bottle, so I don't know, I kind of like that. It's hard to see, but it's got kind of some like faint gloss for the name of the fragrance there in Arabic. And on the back, it also has rag buff for man kind of there. So nice little added detail, nice little added touch, but overall really nice looking bottle. Cap on this is a cheap plastic. It's pretty thick though, so don't feel like this is gonna break in my hand. So nothing too special about the cap there. And atomizer on this is pretty decent actually. Yeah, nice distribution, pretty far sprays on this. So above average atomizer on this, but what does this smell like? All right, so I haven't even got it on the test strip yet, but like smelling this in the air, the first thing that came to my mind as soon as this hit my nose was Armoff's Train a Wee. That's, this is exactly what I'm getting in the air. That's pretty much what I am smelling right now, but let's give it a fair chance here. Let's see if there's like any notable differences between this, but so far this has got that, that Creed Green Irish Tweed, Dabbed off cool water, arm off, train a wee style of DNA going to it right, right out the jump. It, very much so. Th th that's exactly what this is. It's got that kind of citrus up top. It's got this nice clean lavender in there. Very clean, very fresh. A little bit of sweetness, like a little bit of kind of like a citrusy sweetness coming through. Like that, that kind of aromatic floral nature to it with that lavender, a little bit of violet perhaps. It is a very clean, very fresh, very crisp style of fragrance and, and very undeniably has that green Irish tweed style of DNA that if you smelled our, our moths train a wee, that's really what you're getting here. I'm gonna have to pull out the train a wee to see. It's been a while since I've worn that one, but all right, I don't, I don't wanna derail things too, too much here, but like I have to, I have to see, I have to compare this. Very, very similar. They are, it is, it's the same DNA for sure. If you have the Armoff train a wee already, this may be a little bit redundant. Ooh, that Ragba man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this one so far. Let's let this dry down. Let's see how it kind of unfolds, how, what we got going on here. But, but so far I'm really, I'm really enjoying this kind of interpretation of the, the Creed, Green Irish Tweed, Cool Water, Arm Off Train and Wee style of DNA. So let's get to the dry down. All right, so we're back with the dry down of Latafa's Ragba for Man. It's been just over an hour and not a whole lot has changed with the scent profile. It's a little bit more woody sort of vibes have kind of come through, but it still has that very kind of fresh, clean, crisp, kind of cut grass, a little bit green, 
fresh laundry style of feel. I will say the Trey Nui has like a little bit more sweetness to it. This one comes across a little bit smoother and a little bit more wood. So this has kind of like just a slight bit more kind of like a mature vibe to it. But for the most part, it does have that, again, that kind of aromatic nature to it, that clean laundry, that fresh cut grass, kind of almost kind of like a lemongrass sort of feel going on with it. Very, very nice, very smooth, very well-rounded. Quite pleased for paying, what did I pay? $22 on Fragrance Buy. Quite happy with this pickup so far. Really nice fragrance. That's Latafa's Regba for man. All right, up next, we're moving to the house of Rasasi, and it's Rasasi's Tasmim. Tasmim? Tasmem? Picked this sucker up for $21 at Perfumes Online. Again, I'm gonna have links down in the description to all these fragrances if you decide any of them tickle your fancy. I have not heard anything about this one. I don't think I've ever seen anyone really review this one. Um, maybe in like some older videos. I think this has been around for a little while. So I don't I don't really know what to expect with this one. It, the price was right on like Fragrantica. The note breakdown seems pretty reasonable, something I might enjoy. So let's just bust into this, figure it out. All right, so there we have the box for Rasasi's Tasmem. So it's got this kind of like cut out windows there with like, you know, some shiny colored paper in there. It is kind of a, you know, a textured but yet thin cardboard box. On the back, it does have this kind of cool looking like pattern that's going on there. Sort of interesting, but overall, it's just a normal cardboard box, nothing too crazy about this. So let's take a look at the bottle, see what we got going on here. All right, so there we have the bottle for Rasasi's Tasmim. Nice looking bottle. I, the pictures kind of deceive me a little bit. It's got kind of like the colored glass on the back, but it is kind of a see-through one. I thought initially when I was looking at pictures that it was like actual coverings for it, but it is a transparent bottle. It does have a really kind of cool looking kind of bejeweled cap that's got like a little bit of a, a see-through top to it. So that's a nice little added touch, a little interesting. Cap itself is a metal, so this is not a cheap plastic, so. Pretty good, pretty good so far. Check out the atomizer, see what we're working with here. Atomizer is pretty weak. It does the job, but nothing too special there. But overall, box and bottle presentation for, what did I say, $21, pretty good. But what does this smell like? So again, just from spraying this in the air off the first jump here, I'm getting a very sweet style of fragrance. It's a lot of kind of like vanilla tonka that I'm get, picking up out of the air. But let's get this on paper, let's give this a, a fair go here, see what we got, see what we got going on here. So now this has calmed down after a few seconds, what I'm picking up is some really nice spices and a lot of like sweet style of vanilla kind of vibes coming through with this. It is like a nice like cardamom coming up top with some cumin, I believe. There is a nice kind of smoothness to this that's mixing with that cardamom, that cumin combination. That vanilla, there's like a little bit of like powderiness coming through. I believe that's from like some, some iris or orris root that's mixed in there. A little touch of sweetness that's not vanilla sweetness is coming through as well. But this does have kind of like a gentlemanly sort of vibe to it, but it also has like a little bit of a playful edge to it with that kind of sweetness is coming through. But those spices kind of add like that masculine sort of feel to it so far. This is very interesting. I, I like this so far. As this is kind of developing a little bit more, more of that spice is starting to come a little bit, a little bit more forward. It was kind of intermingling in the beginning. It wasn't like a dominant player, but that cardamom, that cumon, that's really coming forward a lot more right now. And there is like a slight kind of floral sweetness that's starting to come through, like like a like kind of a rose, but it's not like a rosy style of fragrance. Maybe it's that, again, that iris and orris root that's coming forward a little bit. Adding a touch of that floral style of sweetness, not flowery, but just kind of a, a different kind of sweetness than that vanilla, mixing with that cardamom and that cumin, which is really, really pushing forward right now. Really enjoying this one. Pretty excited to see how this one dries down. So let's skip to the dry down. All right, so we are back with the dry down of Rasasi's Tasmim, Tasmem. Correct me down in the comments if I'm pronouncing that terribly. Tasmim, Tasmim. Awesome fragrance. I'm really liking the dry down in this. The cardamom has really come forward in this dry down. It has changed from the opening. In the opening, like I was saying, like it was kind of a dance between all the different notes, but now this has this is settled. That cardamom note with a little bit of that cumin has really come forward. It's very much like a cardamom forward fragrance. This does remind me a little bit, I'm not saying this is a clone of, but it does remind me of the same style of cardamom that's used in Yves Saint Laurent's La Nuit de L'Homme. Very much that same kind of style of cardamom, really beautiful, beautiful style of cardamom. And you do get that vanilla that's coming through a lot more. So this vanilla has pushed forward, adding just like the right level of sweetness to it. It does have this nice kind of dry powderiness to it as well. Kind of this like dusty amber sort of feel going on to it. 
but it still has like a bit of a light feel to it. So like this, I feel like this could be worn year round. I think in the heat, this could do fairly well. For me, this does have more kind of a cool fall, early spring sort of vibe going on to it, but I think you could pull this off year round. It just has that kind of versatility kind of going with it, but it's really nice. It's not like an overly sweet fragrance with that vanilla. It's not an overly spicy style of fragrance with that cardamom. Nice balance, nice use of all those spices with that, that sweet accord. It's very gentlemanly, but it does have that kind of playful, flirty vibe going on to it. Because similar to, like I said, La Nuit de Lome. This is not what I was expecting, and it is a really like high quality fragrance for $21. I'm kind of surprised at how this comes across. Very smooth, very elegant, very gentlemanly, very classy, sexy, and I'm really, really quite enjoying this one. So gonna get this on skin, give it, you know, sink my teeth into this one, and give you guys a full review, so stay tuned for that. That's Rosasi's Tasmim. All right, next up, we get another one from the House of Latafa, and this is one that I have been like looking for for a while because I really like the original and I wanted to try this one quite a bit and I saw it pop up on Perfumes Online and that is Latafa's Oud Najdia. Now I picked this bad boy up for $26 at Perfumes Online and like I said, I've, I've, I knew of the existence of Oud Najdia. There's also like Najdia Tribute, I believe, which I have not tried yet, but I have the original Najdia. I really like that one. I think it's a great summer fragrance. I have a full review of that one. I'll leave a link down in the description. But the Oud Najdia one, I'd heard good things about it, but it wasn't really available. But Perfumes Online, they came through, they have this available. So I'm really excited. Let's go check this one out, see what we got. All right, so there is the box presentation for Oud Najdia. Really nothing to it. This is a pretty simple, straightforward cardboard box. That's, that's the most exciting part is this front part. So not much to this box. Let's dig in, let's get to the bottle, get to the exciting part. All right, so there we go. There we have Oud Najdia's bottle. This is very heavy. This is like the deceivingly heavy from what you can see on the camera. This feels like, like a mini cinder block, to be quite honest. It has this nice kind of frosted glass that has this like really kind of cool texture on it. Quite nice. I can't get over how heavy this thing is. Cap on this is is a metal, but it has plastic on the inside, so it's got a little bit of lightweight in it. It's, it's a little lightweight, but it is a metal cap, but overall, kind of a nice cap, nothing nothing too crazy. And atomizer on this, oh, this, this could be a problem. This collar is a little sketchy. So we'll have to make sure that stays on. So what did I pay, $26? I don't know if that's excusable. Let's see what the atomizer does on this. Fat sprays, but like doesn't go, too far, but definitely got the job done. I'd say about an average atomizer on this. So overall, clicks into place after you give it a little oomph. Overall presentation on this, pretty good. This collar, I'm docking, I'm docking points here, Latafa. I know, we're, I know we're buddies, but you should secure the collars a little bit. But what does this smell like? Again, just spraying this in the air and not getting this on a test strip right away. This comes across as like very much a like, designer style of fragrance, like a very kind of popular style designer of fragrance. It has some like, for me, like my the first place my brain went to, I'm gonna have to give this more of a smell, but my first place my brain went to was like Wanted by Night, the Azara Wanted by Night. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting right now. It's, it's got that kind of like cinnamon, woody, sweet, energetic kind of youthful style going to it. So let's get this on paper, see what we got going on here. But in the air, it really has that designer style fragrance, like walking into, like the Bay or like, you know, your local Nordstrom's or wherever you go and sample perfumes to, to do your research before you go to a discounter and, and buy it buy it there. All right, so right off the top, you get this really nice apple that's in there. There is this citrusy style of bergamot there, adding a little bit of tartness to it. And you get like a nice kind of woods coming through and it's got this kind of like cinnamon style going to it, like a cinnamon with some woods mixed with that sweet apple and that bergamot. This does have that kind of Najdia, the original sort of, fingerprint on it, I'd say. It's not exactly like Najdia, but you, you can tell this is kind of a flanker of, but it is different and it is quite nice. It's a little bit, I wanna say mature, but like not, not by much, not by much. It still has that kind of youthful energy to it, but just a little bit, the, those added woods to it, it's giving it a little bit more of kind of a more mature style to it. So let's let this dry down, see kind of how things unfold so far, but really, I'm really excited about this one. This one was worth the wait so far. So skip to the dry down, see what we got. All right, so we are back with the dry down of Latafa's Oud Najdia. It's been just over an hour for this one. And this one is also 
a fairly linear scent. This hasn't changed a whole lot. A little bit more woods has come forward. It has this kind of warm spice that's kind of worked in there from this kind of cinnamon bark style of note that's coming through but it's still maintained that really sweet apple that's there. Still has a little hint of that citrus, but that citrus has dropped back and that apple has come a lot more forward. So it does have that kind of juicy, fruity, sweet apple note going on, mixing with that woods and that warm spice and a little hint of like vanilla and musk coming through in the base. And it is quite nice. It's very much that Najdia DNA. So if you're familiar with the original Latafa's Najdia, this, this you can tell is a flanker of that. This does have like an energetic nature to it. This is still on the youthful side, but a little bit more of kind of the, the older youthful. So like maybe late twenties, early thirties style of youthful. Really nice. It is a sweet style of fragrance. It is more sweet than it is like spicy or woody, but that spice in that wood does kind of tame down that sweetness just enough that it is quite enjoyable, nice, well-rounded. I'm really enjoying this one. Love to see how this one's gonna do on skin. I think this is gonna be more kind of a warmer weather style of fragrance, but, and it is the winter here now, but we'll see how it does in the winter. I'm gonna wear this a handful of times, come back at you with a full review, let you know how it's going, but really glad I picked this one up. That's Latafa's Udnajdia. All right, next up, we're moving back to the house of Rasasi, and this one, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about this. It has some notes in here. It has apparently a lot of rose. It has like a tomato leaf note in it. I'm really not sure what to expect with this one, but it's a pretty popular one and it's Rasasi's Shira. Now I hope I'm pronouncing that one right, but like I said, this one has like notes listed, like it has a double rose note listed in here. It has like tomato leaf. It has like some Artemisia. It's got some wacky note profiles to this. I don't know what to expect, but like I've heard good things about this and I'm trying to broaden my horizons here. I'm trying to step out of my comfort zone. So let's, let's do that right now. Let's step out of my comfort zone. All right, so there we have the box presentation of Rasasi's Shira. It's kind of like a, almost like a plasticky kind of cardboard. I'm not even sure if it is cardboard. It's got kind of a plasticky feel. You can hear that. And there's not much to it to be, other than that, like all the necessaries on the back and it opens like normal. So a little bit interesting, but overall pretty, pretty straightforward box, nothing too crazy or exciting. So let's take a look at the bottle, see what we got. All right, so there we have the bottle presentation for Rasasi's Shura. Nice thick glass, pretty heavy. It's got like a, you know, a nice thick base to it. Fairly thin bottle and it has this kind of plastic style cap, it's pretty lightweight, but it does not feel cheap. It does have kind of a, like a nice matte finish to it overall, but overall pretty like plain, classy, you know, nothing too obnoxious style of bottle to it. So I like that overall. It does, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely insane or whatever. So for what did I pay for this? $27 at Fragrance Buy. Overall presentation, pretty good. Let's see the atomizer on this. Wow, oh wow. That is a killer atomizer. This has got the best atomizer of, of all the fragrances I've done so far. This one shot halfway across the room. I think I may have sprayed some on my wall. So atomizer on this, A plus so far, Rasasi. So, Let's see what this smells like. All right, again, this sprayed halfway across the room and so like the, I just filled the room with this fragrance. I am getting that like what I'm assuming is the tomato leaf. It has that very kind of earthy garden style of smell to it. So it, it has this bitterness, this herbaceous kind of note in the air right now. Quite interesting. Let's get this on paper. Let's give this, you know, a little bit more of a go. I gotta be careful. I don't wanna blast my hand with this. Oof, that atomizer. That is nice. Even if I don't like the fragrance, I'm quite happy with the atomizer. Yeah, so it does have a very green style of opening. It has this like the freesia, this tomato leaf, this rose that kind of mixes in there. I'm mostly getting the earthiness from this. Very herbaceous sort of smelling, a little bit of that sweet style of floral from the rose coming through. A little bit of a woodiness there that's kind of calming down that, that greenness that was in there at the beginning because that's, I'm assuming again, it's maybe the freesia, the tomato leaf that's in the very top that's, coming together, it, it really has, like if you stick your face into a vegetable garden sort of smell to it, that, that's really what I was getting off the jump. I don't know if it's because my grandmother had a, a large vegetable garden that we used to like help her out with and all that kind of stuff, but this so far is reminding me of my grandmother and I'm not sure if that's good when you're picking out a men's fragrance. It has a bit of a soapy vibe coming through now. So it's, it's got this kind of soapiness to it. But like I said, it, it kind of has like an old candy, soapy, earthy garden sort of vibe going on to it. 
I, I'm sorry, this is just like how, where my brain's going, but this really reminds me of Grandma's House. Like it just has the same style of soap that she would use, kind of that rosy floral, those old candies that would sit in the dish and like they'd get all hard and crusted because like no one would take those candies. It smells like that candy dish. It smells like her vegetable garden. It smells like kind of that potpourri style of rose kind of happening. This is interesting. I don't know if I like this right now. I, I'm First impressions, I, I just, I don't know if I like this, to be quite honest. This is a little challenging for me. It doesn't smell like an old lady perfume, but it smells like an old lady's house. It, that's probably the best way to describe this at the moment. So let's let this dry down. Let's let this calm down a little bit. Let me like sink my teeth into this a little bit more, get to the dry down, see where we're going before I give any sort of final impressions. But so far, if, I don't know about this one. So let's skip to the dry down. All right, so we are back with the dry down of Rasasi's Shara. It's been about an hour now. We'll let this kind of settle. I'm trying to kind of like clear expectations or preconceived notions of anything. Cause I like, I wasn't too, too hot on this fragrance when I first did the opening here, but it is a very unique fragrance. This is going to be a challenging fragrance for anybody that's hasn't really kind of dived around into a variety of different fragrances. This is not your typical designer style of fragrance. In the dry down, I am getting a little bit more kind of a leathery note coming through and this kind of really smoky, oody style of wood that comes through, but it still maintains that kind of that green herbaceous sort of feel to it. It still has that, like I said, that kind of like vegetable garden sort of feel and it has this kind of candied rose sort of sweetness going on to it. I'm still not sure if I like this, to be honest. It's it's unique. It's not a, like a bad fragrance in terms of quality. I'm just, I, I'm having a tough time getting over the, the combination of that kind of that vegetable garden, rosy candy, like strong, kind of almost animalic leather mixed with that kind of smoky vibe. It's like, like candy and cigarettes in a vegetable garden is kind of where I'm getting the vibe. That sounds terrible. I'm, I know. This might change once I get it on skin. I'm not gonna write this off as a bad fragrance that like no one should wear or anything like that because everyone has their different opinions and this is just my opinion. So I'm not, if you really like this fragrance, I'm not crapping on you. I'm just saying this might not be the scent profile for me. I have to get it on skin. I usually give a fragrance about three goes on a skin before I write it off completely as something that I can't wear. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. But that's Rosasi's Shara. All right, last. But certainly not least, this is one I've been looking forward to for a, quite a while. It's from the Latafa Pride series. It's Latafa Pride's Wajud. Now I picked this sucker up at Fragrance Buy for $27. It's also available at Perfumes Online as well for I believe a very similar price, give or take a dollar. It's available on Perfumes Online as well. Really looking forward to this one. I do have Latafa's Neighboris. I don't mean to be waving a knife around as I'm talking, but I already opened it. I do have Nebris and it's going to be a lot different from this is from what I understand, but I really liked Nebris. So let's just break into this one, see what we got. All right, so there we have the box presentation of Latafa Pride's Wajud. Exactly the same as Latafa's Nebris. I do have a full review of Nebris too. I'll leave down in the description if you wanna check that one out. Awesome presentation. Latafa Pride series really outdoes themselves, especially for $27. Nice textured box here. It's got this kind of like radiating, not mandala, but very similar shape kind of happening right there with the name of the fragrance up top. It's got this kind of like almost faux leather sort of feel to it with these kind of like engraved patterns in it. Really, really nice. Also has this kind of book jacket style of cover box to it. Comes with a Latafa pamphlet with all the Latafa Prides, but I have like a hundred of those right now, so I don't really care. And it does sit in this nice little podium there. So presentation on this, so for like box, all that super good Latafa Pride, hats off to you all the time. I really like these. Bottle, very nice as well. Nice, heavy, matte black sort of finish to it. You know, nice thick glass to this. Very, very similar to Neighbors, except it's silver versus gold. Cap on this is a metal, it's a little lightweight metal, but it is a metal, it doesn't feel cheap whatsoever. And the atomizer on this, good, nice wide puffs, decent distribution. Overall presentation on this top marks as per usual Latafa, but what does this smell like? So, so far just smelling it in the air from testing that atomizer, it is coming across as what I was expecting is a very kind of marine, aquatic style of fragrance, but there is some spice to this that's happening so far. So let's get this on paper, see if we can dive a little bit deeper into this, see what kind of notes we're dealing with. 
yeah, so the opening is very much kind of a marine style feel to it. It does have some nice pepper, like pink pepper up top. So there's like a little touch of sweetness with that spiciness that's mixing with that kind of marine note. And there's a little bit of kind of that, that vetiver lemongrassy style of woods that's kind of coming through just in the background behind that marine and that spice, but very, very nice opening. It's, it does have that kind of fresh, crisp, kind of invigorating style of like what you'd expect with kind of a marine aquatic style of fragrance. As this is developing, it is getting a little bit more green. It's getting a little kind of like an herbaceous feel to it, a little bit kind of more earthy, like seaside kind of vibe to it. So it's not like being in the ocean. It's kind of like, like standing next to the ocean where like some of the, like the vegetation is kind of set up. You're like maybe sitting in some like wet grass along kind of like the edge of the beach or something like that. It has a lot more green coming through. Like I said, herbaceousness, but you still get that kind of salty marine note coming through with that, that spice that was up top. Still has that kind of like lemongrass sort of vibe from the vetiver, but the, the more woody aspect of that is starting to come through. Still got a very bright, fresh sort of feel to it, but it's different. It's not your like typical style of freshy because it has that kind of green edge to it. So this is really nice. I, I am quite enjoying this, how this is coming across. Let's skip to the dry down and see how this kind of unfolds. But so far, I really like how this opened up. Very fresh, bright, marine, peppery but now it's starting to kind of evolve a little bit and get more of a kind of a green nature to it while maintaining that kind of fresh marine style to it. So I think the dry down on this is gonna be very interesting. So let's skip ahead and see what we're working with. All right, so we are back with the dry down of La Taffa Pride's Wajud. So it's just been over an hour now that since the initial opening and this has changed a little bit. It still maintains that kind of marine, a little bit of spice kind of working in there, a little bit of kind of green herbaceousness, like I said, kind of that, that grass at the edge of the beach sort of vibe going on to it. And what's happened now is there's a little bit more woods has come through. Actually, a lot more woods has come through and this nice kind of warm amber combination that's kind of pulled through. So it still has that kind of fresh, bright, crisp, clean marine aquaticness to it. That pink pepper has gotten a little bit sweeter with that spice. So it has like a little touch more of sweetness coming through. And it does have that, like I said, that herbaceous kind of vibe going on to it. But now it has like a little bit more of a kind of a masculine wood, kind of a dusty amber sitting in the base. It's really, really nice. I'm really enjoying the dry down of this. I love the opening and I like this dry down even more. It just all kind of came together and it's very, very well blended. The quality on this is very, very nice, especially for $27. This is coming across absolutely fantastic. And it is kind of not blasting off the paper, but it is jumping off the paper a bit. So I can see this being a fairly good performer in terms of longevity. Definitely gonna be doing a full review of this one. Gonna get this on skin, really sink my teeth into it. See how the kind of scent profile works with my skin chemistry and have to get back to you guys. But so far, I am really happy with this one. That is Latafa Pride's Wajud. All right, so there you have it. That's the unboxing and first impressions of five new Middle Eastern fragrances that I just got into my collection. Love doing these first impressions and unboxings for you guys, so I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Let me know down below, which one do you want to see a full review of first? Like, which one do you really want me to sink my teeth into and give you guys my, like, full review of? So comment down below. Love hearing from you guys. And let me know what else I should be picking up. Latafa, Rasasi, what's one that I'm missing that I haven't covered yet that you guys would like to see me talk about? Comment down below. Love hearing all your recommendations. Love hearing from you guys. Appreciate you. And if you enjoyed this video, Make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.